Welcome to my devlog series, where I document the challenges I undertake each month using Unreal Engine's free for the month assets. Anyway, let's get into it. The rules of the challenge are, as always, I must use at least one of Epic's free for the month assets. I shouldn't spend more than one week of effort on the project for the whole month, and I must make a video reviewing the assets and what was learned. As usual, let's start with a look at what we've got this month. Flexible combat system, basic. Nice, we get a mechanical asset. This looks pretty promising, but there are a lot of warnings that this isn't the real version the author is working on and such, which seems a bit questionable, so I'm interested to get in there and see what's going on. City Environment Mega Pack Volume 2. We've got a really nice looking Japanese city asset here. The signage is a bit questionable though. I don't know if the mistakes are intentional or accidental, but it's funny either way. This might be a little too heavy in terms of storage space for such a small project, but very cool to have in the vault. Dynamic Volumetric Sky. The screenshots here look quite realistic, another really good asset to have, as the default sky in Unreal looks pretty bad when you actually focus on it. Not really anything mind-blowing though. ScanLab's Interior Volume 1. Again, not mind-blowing, but some good looking photorealistic assets to fill out a small room and 104 unique books, which doesn't really seem necessary, but there you go. Countryside, windmills, and barns. This one is pretty niche. It says it's modular, but how many barns and windmills are you really going to need? Jokes aside, I think modularity is pretty much always a benefit. And for the permanently free collection, we have Stylized Asian Village. This is actually made by the same author as last month's Stylized Egypt, so again, it isn't hyper-realistic, but it's still pretty well detailed. So what I'm thinking is to take a few of these, flexible combat system and one of the other asset packs, and seeing how flexible FCS really is by trying to make a Street Fighter-like fighting game. Depending on the amount of time and size of the assets, I might allow selecting multiple levels. I'm still a little burnt out from doing the Epic Mega Jam at the end of August, so I'm going to try to keep things really simple this time. All right, see you on the other side. Let's jump right into a quick review of the assets I used. First off, Asian Village. Overall, I think this asset is very well done. You get a wide range of models that I can see being very useful for creating simple villages and towns. I'm not quite sure if you could turn this into a whole city with believable storefronts and such. It kind of seems like everything is going to give off the same vibe of a rather wealthy person's home, a temple, or maybe like a bank or something. But looking at the modular shapes available, you can definitely achieve unique designs and complex layouts. And the only model I found that isn't modular is this tower. The best part is any building you make is going to be able to have a fully playable interior. You can see the colors I've chosen here are very cliche to play into that mental image of stereotypical Asian architecture as well. Which leads me to my next point, the customizability of the materials is very well done. While the banners aren't very customizable, I would expect any actual game to replace this with their own signage anyway. On to the mechanical core of the game, Flexible Combat System. In my last video, we had the Open World RPG Toolkit, which was a bit rough around the edges, to put it mildly. I'm glad to say that this month's is much more promising, but maybe also the opposite of that in certain ways. Like other toolkits, it needs to be created as its own project, which seems to be an unfortunate policy of epics, according to the author. On a related note, I would really like it if asset developers would be able to use the enhanced input plugin by default, instead of the old system. Of course, this is still marked as beta, so I'm sure Epic doesn't allow this, but it would be so much nicer. Overall, FCS is pretty approachable, if not a little bloated in some areas, but just to put this right up front, no one should buy this asset. Now, that might seem like a pretty mean statement to make, but hear me out. If we look at the store page, we can see that the author says this is the initial release, and there is an updated version. The author suggests that this version may be more suited to beginners, but I take issue with that. Obviously, it is being maintained enough that it supports UE5, but in my opinion, the code quality is a bit lacking. So the biggest reason I wouldn't recommend this is it feels odd that the author would still sell this version, and make this version the one he gives away as a one-time free-for-the-month thing. I would much rather see this version just be a permanently free as a way to upsell people to his real asset, and I would have liked to see him make his actual work free-for-the-month to get more feedback or pump up the reviews for that one. I won't claim to know the economics of doing that, and it might be a terrible business decision for the author, 
but I'd rather focus on what's best for consumers in any case. The second biggest reason I wouldn't recommend this is that even if we assume that only beginners should buy this, the quality of the code could be teaching them bad habits. So to advertise it as the ideal introduction to blueprints and game development, then say it is a standalone asset and cannot be combined with the author's other assets, kind of rubs me the wrong way. Now, I have no idea what the updated version looks like internally or whether the basic version gets any real attention or maintenance from the author, but it feels like an abandoned branch of a product since there is no upgrade path. And just to jump ahead a little bit, this asset has some thought put into flexibility, but it isn't polished or abstracted in such a way that feels like it would really accelerate you very far at all. That said, from a complete beginner's perspective, it would be a decent reference, but not for the cost and not for the bad habits you could pick up along the way either. There are much better resources to learn from out there that will also give you the right architectural guidance, even if they're not a single integrated package. Okay, I don't think anyone wants to continue sitting here and listening to me ramble on about things that could be fixed, especially since we don't know if they are already fixed in the author's real asset. So let's move on to some gameplay already. Now, don't get too upset at me. I did say I was going to take it easy this time around after the Mega Jam. No tutorial, no HUD, no nonsense. The game just starts straight into the action. Basically, the idea is rock, paper, scissors, but instead it's block, punch, kickers, which sort of rhymes. Try not to think about it too hard. Fun fact, apparently the concept of rock, paper, scissors originated in China, then spread to the rest of the world by a Japanese variant that is exactly what we all know today. So extra style points for being on theme? Anyway, so I can block by retreating or just holding down. I had enough fun with the animation blending for various combinations of punching, walking, kicking, and jumping so I didn't bother to add in crouching. Sorry if low kick spamming is your favorite part of fighting games. The enemy has pretty much the same moveset. You should be able to see that when I get kicked, it breaks my block and there's a bit of stun to get follow-up hits in. Punches are fast, short range, and can't break the block, so you can keep blocking while you close the distance. And even if the enemy tries to kick you, if you're fast enough, the punch will be able to interrupt the kick. Punches also let you combo a few hits before you're forced to take a break from spamming. Their health doubles with each defeat, so you really just go for as long as you can. It turned out more fun than I thought it would be with such simple mechanics. But I think we proved that the flexible combat system asset is indeed flexible enough to be able to modify it into a side-scrolling fighter with kicks and punch combos. Most of the modifications were deleting things as well as copying new things to multiple duplicate classes that don't really need to exist, but let's move on from that. So that's September wrapped up. I never thought I'd be making a side-scrolling fighting game, but you've got to go where the inspiration leads you, I guess. If you want to see a video on the game I made for the epic Mega Jam, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to squeeze it in before next month's challenge. Or if you really want me to not make that video, let me know that too. That's kind of a weird opinion for you to have, but okay. Also, feel free to join me and show off what you can do each month with the free asset packs. If I can do it, anyone can. As always, if you have any suggestions or just want to tell me how awful I am, feel free to leave a comment, I guess. 